What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast once again. Here in the Scarface Cave, Nelson Rodriguez Jr., your host, author of Montana Method. Of course, today, another special guest, good friend of mine from high school. We go way back. Uh, part-time cowboy, part-time jet enthusiast, part-time lawyer, and full-time badass, mm -hmm. Roberto Dominguez. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Yeah. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. Yeah. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. Yeah. I never asked for nothing, no. <laughs> but now I want it all. Yeah. Promise I'ma do it Came from rags to riches yeah. Rags to riches Came from rags to riches yeah. Rags to riches Came from rags What's up, bro? What's up, buddy? What an introduction <laughs> Holy shit <laughs> I, I never planned them, too They just like, boom That was good I like the cowboy part <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank because you because of the boots? Of course No, I mean, and you're always in Texas You know, I know so. I'm the hot <laughs> <laughs> I love the couch Thank you, bro Yeah, I, li I like my guests to be comfortable I kind of feel like Tony Montana But then, like, I have a capello <laughs> So it kind of makes me a little softer. I, I, li I like the vibe, though. Right? It's a good mix. It's, I, it's like... I feel comfortable, for sure. <laughs> That's great. What does a day in the life of Robert Dominguez consist of? Well, I wake up... I got two kids. Mm. A wife and two kids. Wake up early. I'm like four, five. Gym, cardio. Mm. I have to do cardio. Even if it's five minutes, just... It's my buffer zone before I go to work. Mm. I have to be at work probably two, three hours before my employees. Okay. It's the only way I can have full grasp and control of my of my office. And then just madness until five o'clock. Chaos. Yeah. It's nonstop. It's it's <laughs> but I do need my time right before they get there. It's super important. It's not easy. You know what I've noticed? Anybody who, who is living like a quote unquote successful life, that's that's a relative it's term. Relative, but, of course. But whoever's living a life that they, they planned, like that you designed, mm -hmm. is what I'm gonna say, always has that buffer. You have always to. you go crazy. Because you have so much to get done that if you don't take that little bit of time to do stuff for yourself, you'll you'll go insane, bro. Like it's just it's not even stuff for yourself. It's stuff for your 30, 40 employees mm. with thousands of clients. Uh, so yeah, it's it's it is for myself to be able to deal with everybody else, mm. because if if you're not focused, right? I, I always say like, thank you God for giving me the strength of wisdom, and wisdom is not that you're wise; it's just that you make the right decisions and you deal with people the right way. Right? Um, you go crazy because it's at least for me. I I feel like I'm in the jungle, and it's just like throwing they're throwing punches at me from from everywhere. I feel you, bro. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my industry, it's just, there's so much to my industry. Going on, yeah. That if you're not sharp, you'll lose it all. Mm. So you have to be sharp in every single aspect, every single angle, and every decision you make, it's like the last one. Mm. So for me to be sharp with two kids and a wife, and I have to wake up early and just, like, meditate, 30-minute, like, nap in the middle of the day, just, okay, fuck, let's... Mm. Let's do it. And then just go out there and just go swinging. That's awesome. Bro. At least for me. That, that That's the only way I can do it. If not, I'll go crazy. Yeah, super important. I think most people, and I've been a, I've been guilty of doing this, you get so caught up in the daily, ah, that you don't take that 10 seconds to be like, wait a second, all right. Maybe I should look at this from a different angle. Let me, uh, hold on. All right, so maybe if I do it like this, all right, all right, I want to do that. You yeah, I mean? I mean, the thing for me is that I got so many people writing on my decisions that if I'm not clear and focused, everyone's going down the wrong, you know, mm. like avenue. So I have to just t take a step back, be like, okay, hold on, let's let's an let's analyze this mm. because my employees are coming with me problems constantly, X or Y, X or Y, and I'm like, well, relax, relax, Ho hold on, let's 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 mm. analyze this, get a, get a marker. That's my new thing now. Like all my doors in the office are glass. Oh, so, so you can get, write a mark, get a marker. Get a marker. Write this down. What what happened? Well, the problem is write it down. Okay, boom. That's the problem. What are the issues? Write it down. So like it calms them down. Mm. All right. What are the solutions? Write them. Write them down. A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now let's talk. So by the time 
I break it down, I'm like, okay, do we have to make a decision? Because I don't know about you, but so, someone once told me the best decision to make is no decision at all. Mm. Right? That's good. The best decision you make is prolong this decision until it's time to make it. Mm. So when you tell me you want water, I say yes or no. But when you give me a problem, usually humans, are, they, they tend to just give you an answer. Right, so, right. all right, hold on. When do you need an answer by? Um, you got 30 days. Cool. All right. Perfect. We'll talk about it. But if I just tell you something right away, what happens is I didn't think about it. Mm. And there's some, certain things like water, sure. But there's certain things that are not water bottle. There's, there's, there's depth to that answer. Yep. And once you give it, someone's going to execute and do it. Mm. So you, by the time you think about it, you're home like, shit. Damn, did I say that? All right. Can't take that back. So mm. the best decision is the one that you don't make. All right. Let's, let's, do you need something by? No. How much time do you need? All right. I need it by next week. All right. Cool. Remind me next week. And the next week I'm going to ask you, you're going to ask me, I'm like, what, do you need it by now? No, no, it's not, it's not urgent. Just I'll give you an extra week. All right, cool. Do you need me to answer now? And then, but maybe I don't even have to make a fucking decision. Mm. <laughs> so it's every decision I don't make, it's a mistake that I avoided. So unless you have to like execute. And, right, of course. Which at that point, it's not a question. It's just boom. I like that because sometimes not choosing to stay neutral and not take action on that issue, the issue kind of resolves itself sometimes. Yeah. And it's hard to stay neutral because most humans, I mean, myself, you, you always want to just go, go, yeah, like yeah. say something. Why? Like, I no, I'm not, I got nothing to say. Like, just let me know when I absolutely must say it. And since that's, as an attorney, I, I litigate. I'm a trial yeah. attorney. So if I don't have to say something, until you press me to say it, I'm not going to say anything. Mm. So when it's absolutely like, hey, I'm doing a motion to compel answers because you have an answer in two months. All right, cool. Look, my client, you better answer. But if you don't press me to answer something, why would I? I'm not telling you yes or no. I don't care. Mm. Man, that's really good, bro. In a world where it's like, go, 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 go. Why? Like, what am I getting out of this? Like, am I getting paid to make a decision? No. <laughs> so why would I care? <laughs> I'm not telling you nothing. Do whatever the fuck you want. Bro. Like, why Why would I put myself in a spot that it's a predicament to me to benefit you? No. Like, if I don't have to make a damn decision, I'm going to lay back and let the fucking world burn. It's, it's not on me. Now, when it's my turn, I have to execute and do my shit. I'm not going to ask you. I'm, I'm going to do what I have to do. Mm. But that's the thing, the problem most humans, they get involved in too much shit. That's not the problem. Mm. Seriously. What do you think about aliens? I don't. F <laughs> <laughs> Let's not even bring that up because that's a four hour podcast. What do you think about aliens? <laughs> bro. It's not in my agenda. I don't know. Bro. I don't think. <laughs> I've never thought about it. <laughs> if it's part of my agenda and I absolutely have to tell you an answer because my rent and mortgage and, and bills depends on me giving you an answer. I'm going to think about it for a while. I'm going to do a report. I'm going to investigate. And then I'm going to tell you what I think about aliens. Mm. But I'll probably ask you for a deadline extension before <laughs> I have to. And by that time, aliens are irrelevant and you're not going to ask me and I'm and not going to have to tell you anything. Yep. So that, that, that's just me. That's my, I've learned through mistakes. Mm. Through doing, through rushing things. They're giving you answers that are, doesn't fucking matter. You mm -hmm. told me. I should, I should have never said that. You're right. I didn't really care. I just said it. I'm, right now, I'm thinking of how many moments can I think of right now where the person was like, you told me. And I was like, shit, I did say that. I was just being nice. Mm. And then it just comes and bites you. So it's like, if do you need an answer from me? No, okay. Then you're not going to get an answer from me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It, does, it, it doesn't matter what I think. Mm. I, don't, I don't think. I haven't put one ounce of energy into that thought. So I'm not going to give you an answer just to say something. Like, my answer is, I have none. Mm. Pay me and I'll come up with one. Mm. Oh, you don't want to? So it's not that important. Mm. That's me. I like it. Right? I like it. I refuse to answer. You know what? I I, I heard something years ago, bro, that I, it's, it's state. You know when you hear uh -huh, something? Yeah, 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 it sticks. Check this out. I was talking to this guy, a very successful guy. Yeah. You know, a business owner, made... 
eight, eight, nine figures a year. Nice. And we were just having a conversation. I was telling him about something about that my father told me and like he was had being negative. Uh-huh. And he goes, Nelson, does your father have money? And I go, no, uh. he's broke. And he goes, interesting. Broke people give out their opinions for free. Successful people give out their opinions for a fee and they call it consulting. And super successful people give you no opinions. Because mm. even if you pay me a fee, I don't give a fuck about what you're asking me. <laughs> Not me. I'm not, I'm not saying it might be happening. I'm right, saying right, right. those people at that level can care less. Hey, look, I'll give you a fee. Like, I don't care about you or your ideas. Like, uh, I'm building freaking artificial intelligence here. Right. And I'm trying to take a rocket to you know, space. Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't care about your little life bullshit. Yes. Nor do I want you to give me $100 million to answer you that question. I really don't care. Good luck. Yes. Because in the grand scheme of things, what is a hundred million dollars to that guy? Nothing. Nothing. Those guys don't give a shit. You can't pay that guy enough money to take his time. So that's why usually when people try to engage in like discussions with me, I mean, there's there's two types of people. There's the people who give you their their perspective in good faith. They just don't care. They just they're just having conversation. They're having a conversation. There's the people who are constantly trying to like have arguments. The yeah. most successful people I've met, it's hard for them to. To steer you away from making a mistake. Because they don't care. Mm. And the reason why they don't tell you why you're doing something wrong is because most people can't take the criticism. So let's say a very successful guy sees you struggling. He's got two options. He stops from his successful day to tell you, hey, you're fucking up. He knows you're going to take it personal. You're going to get offended. You're going to start crying. You're going to want to kill yourself. So he's like, why? Why am I going to endure this? madness just to try to perfect something that's not my problem so fuck it yeah go hit the wall i don't care mm. now, you, under, you understand yep because most people can't like for instance i i sometimes have friends that they're just not doing good right they're not doing good in every sense you can be not doing good financially spiritually um relationship with your with your fat but then i have two options either i tell them how i think they can improve which again who the fuck am i to tell you or i just don't even acknowledge it what's safer for me just do you like whatever you want to do do it if you're gonna you like to do crack do crack i'm not gonna tell you why crack is bad right it's like they always tell me the story of the it's the bee right and the bug mm. they always tell me a story like i have friends so they're always telling me a story of the bee and the bug they're like, it doesn't matter how many times the bee tells the bug the honey is better than shit. Right? You need bugs, you need bees. Like, the bee, the bug is not going to become a bee, and the bee is not going to become a bug. So don't tell the fucking bug, hey, honey tastes a lot better than shit. Because they've never seen honey before. All they know is shit. And they're always going to be around the shit. So just, if you want to be friends with a bug or a bee, just... Talk about the heat, but don't talk about honey. <laughs> That's it. So it's like, all right, man, just you make your decision, do whatever you want. You might be a good person, or you might be a bad person, a good business partner, or you might just do what you got to do, have the relationship that you have to have. Don't mix them. Because mm. there's good friends that are not good business people, and there's people who are not friends, but they're business people. Don't mix it. Just do what you got to do. With those people and mm. that's it. So I'm thinking of an interesting question now. People like you and me that had that, all right, honey is better than shit. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> I love honey. So do you, in your opinion, does it just, is it just a matter of someone going on their journey and realizing it on their own? That's, that's what needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the key. There's not such a thing as someone taking you in the path to, to make honey. Mm. Right. It's like the same thing of saying the path to, to eat shit. You just take it. Mm. And, you know, I'm not saying that. I mean, I've been in the eating shit path. I just didn't like the taste. Of course. So I said there has to be something better because this tastes like shit. <laughs> right? I didn't know if I was a bee or a bug or an insect or a roach. I just didn't like the taste of that. Mm. So I said, let me look for something else. What's the worst? It tastes more like shit it's impossible it tastes yeah. really bad and then you start getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter till you're like okay 
I want me some organic bee honey from Kentucky. Right. Because I don't even like honey anymore. Now I want organic honey. And then you're like, okay, how organic is this? Where was this grown? Mm. What type of chemicals? Right. Right? But it, it's just uh, you can't take someone there. You got to taste it. And if you don't have a problem tasting shit, all right, then you're good. I didn't like the taste of it. So I went for something sweeter. Mm. Right? But again, it's just, it's all subjective, man. Like you can't tell somebody to do something. If they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's like freaking Grant Cardone telling me, hey, bro, you're, you're a loser. And I'm like, what do you mean? They have a different vision, right? Everybody has a different vision. Um, you think you're right. Everybody thinks you're right. The same way you think you're right, and I think I'm right. Trump thinks it's right. Grandon thinks it's right. Biden thinks it's right. Everyone's got their own vision, and they're good in their own way. Mm. So you can't always, you can't look at people and be like, ah, bro. You're they're crazy. the heroes in their own stories. Correct. Right. And everybody is. Nobody's a villain. Because maybe the guy eating shit, technically, like eating like she, like, like a bug. Metaphorical. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Not, not. Not literal. Maybe that guy eating shit, there's somebody eating more shit. Yeah, yeah. And he's I get like, ah, my shit's the t best tasty shit in the street. Right. Or maybe he thinks it's honey from his perspective. Or maybe he thinks it's honey. Maybe yeah. I'm eating shit myself and it's not even honey. Who knows? But it's just, it's, you always have to know that there's always a better way, right? Um, Stay open-minded. Very important. Always open-minded. If you think you, you know it all, you don't know shit. Oh, yeah. Pfft, right? Elon Musk is probably Homer right now saying, I don't know nothing. And you're like, wait, he doesn't know nothing? What do I know? <laughs> What do you mean? Mm. But that that's the key. Like, you don't know nothing. And, and the more you know, the more you have to learn. Um, but you do have to find, in my opinion, um, a complacent level of, like, you're striving to do better. Mm. But you're not ungrateful. And you're not, you don't want more. If it makes sense, right? Because there's always going to be something better. Always. No matter who you are. There's always going to be a higher level. Always. At everything in life. If you're here, there's a here. And if you think this is the top, there's a top. Ask God, right? There's a higher level. You're never going to get there. But you have to enjoy the journey of every level that you're at. And it doesn't matter what level there is. It's always going to be in the middle. You're never at the lowest level because you weren't born yesterday. And you're never at the highest level because you're not dead. Mm. So whatever level you're in, just know that you're not that far away from the next one. And you're not that far away from the Falling next one back. either. Yeah. <laughs> you're always here. Just enjoy the ride and always strive to go to a different level, not taking for granted the level you're at. Super important. Because you can always go up or you can go down. go down. So just enjoy the one you have because, trust me, it's not the worst mm. and it's not the best. It's what's supposed to be. Enjoy the ride. That, mm. That's how you see it. Um, life's fun, bro. It's, Life is super fun. It's a fun, fucking game. Bro. Even in the moments, I can think back, even in the moments where I fell back uh -huh. and I went down a level, it was what is still fun. What is falling back? It's part of the game. No, no. But what is falling back? To, it means nothing. It's, it's, a, men it's yeah. a mental state. What does fall back mean? I lost $100 million. Did you really lose it? Well, man, yeah, I did. It left my bank account. I lost it. All right, cool. But was it a real loss? What you gain from it? Damn, I should have never done... Okay, maybe it was a $100 million investment. Mm. Right? Maybe you invested $100 million because if you continue, when you make a billion, that 100 right? That, that's a perspective. Right. What did you lose? You didn't have nothing. What'd you start with? Nothing. So you're back to zero. You're back. It's a, it's a game. Just because you're playing a game, you resets. Doesn't exactly. mean you're lost. Exactly. You just got to start again. Just and now you have the experience and the wisdom. Which you didn't have before, so you're not back to zero. You're back to like 0 0.5. Right. Which you didn't have the 0.5 before. And you could have gone to level 100 and you never gained that 0.5. So you could have gone to level 100 and then start at zero again. Yep. So it, 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 it's all perspective. It's all perspective. It's all how you see shit, right? And it's funny because I bet you maybe could think of this. When I was a kid, I was like, man, I wish I knew how to do this. Guess what? This time when you lost, now you know how to do that. So do it. You know what I mean? Like... How much do you pay to go to school? X amount of money to gain an experience. Right. How much would you pay to learn how to not fuck up? 
You have to fuck up to gain that experience. Exactly. You can't go to school and be like, teach me how not to lose. You have to lose and you're going to learn by not doing the same thing you did last time. And the harder the loss, the more experience you gain. Absolutely. So the har the more you lose, the more you gain. If you use it towards, you know, like positive thinking. Of course. If you lose a lot and you don't use it towards positive thinking. Why not? You just, yes. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's, it's devastating. Yeah. But what is a loss though? It's yeah. a semester you paid that you spent money on. Yep. And you lost it because you fucked up. You made the wrong decision. You chose the wrong whatever this is, partners career uh, you, you but you can make it up and you know how you're not gonna get there again don't do that again if you do that again hey i guarantee you're gonna end up in the same pace mm. so that that's how i see it you know you just make um educated decisions and it's a 50 50 and man it might go this way it might go this way mm. and if you went this way do it again and if it goes this way don't do it again just don't do that again do the opposite. That's my primitive, uh, very uh, elementary mentality. But I like I like it. It's very black and white. Basic. Uh, you got to keep things simple. Can't you know? complicate yourself. Oof. I think people who kind of do that and think that life is complicated. Life isn't complicated. Bro. It's not. Life is super simple. You live and you die. And everything in between is, <laughs> is a bonus. Is life. Is a, everything in between <laughs> is a damn bonus. You're alive or you're, you're dead. dead. If you're alive, enjoy it. Play the game. If you're dead, all right, that, that's an easy game one. Over. You're, game <laughs> over. <laughs> so in between, just do good, be good, and strive to be good. And doesn't mean you're always going to hit your, your goals of being good. And, and But as long as that's your, your end, I am trying to be better. I'm trying to be more helpful. I'm trying to become better. Doesn't mean that you have to be good. Just you're you're trying. You have all life to 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 get it done, and when you accomplish it, you're gonna die. So just keep trying. It's not that it's not rocket science, honestly. Not at all, man. You know what's funny? Most people don't know cynic was a person uh -huh. in ancient Greece. That's where cynicism comes from. Okay, it's a philosophy. Of course. So if you think by the way, I said of scores like if I knew him, but I'm just, just, <laughs> I'm, just I'm just acting fancy. Yeah, it makes sense, but I didn't know. No, but I read a book. Uh, I read it's. I mean, it's just the biggest stoicism book or whatever that everybody reads. Uh -huh. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Okay. And in the introduction, the, the guy who's interpreting the the actual journal of Marcus Aurelius, he's telling you, look, there's these different types of philosophy, and there was this okay. person that. So cynicism, it was a philosophy in ancient Greece, and it, it came from a guy named Cynic. Okay. So. It's cynical of us, right, of to say, oh, we're going to die. Who cares? But it's also true. And it, it's a philosophy too, right? Yeah. So it's a way of life, way of seeing things. Yeah. Right? Um, it is the truth, though. Look, this is how you see it. It's no philosophy. It's just very basic, highly instinct. <laughs> <laughs> you will die, right? So if, if you're planning certain things in your life, like if you're not going to die, like let's say you had a a guarantee you won't die clause. You're not dying. Okay, cool. You better be cautious because you're going to have to live with this shit for the rest of eternity. The rest of eternity, yeah. Which is even worse. It's fuck. It's, it's, it's tough. Right. But you're telling me you have on a good, good, good day, 100 years. That's that's fantastic. It's fantastic. And on a bad day, you might have one day because tomorrow you're out. Yep. What are you going to do? What do you mean what am I going to do? Whatever brings joy to my heart. As long as it's not hurting people and it's not affecting other people's lives because just because you want to do crack doesn't mean you have to like get into a car and kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. You want to do crack? Go, hey, listen, do it in your couch by yourself. That brings joy to your life. You might die tomorrow from it or you might last 100 years doing it. Whatever you into. But whatever brings joy to your heart that doesn't hurt or affect other people do it, whatever that might be. Now, when you're into like weird stuff that affects other humans, mm. that's a no. But if it's you and self, whatever you're doing to yourself, have fun. You only have this life to live. And if that's what you really find passionate to yourself, do it because you will die. In a day tomorrow, in hours today, or in 60 years. 
So whatever you're doing, just make sure you, you really, really like it. That <laughs> you're gonna continue this trend for sixty more years. That's it. It's, it's that simple. There's nothing else to this shit. Like really, there's, there's nothing else to this. That's and that's how I try to lead my life. Like you don't fucking die tomorrow. So why are you gonna get stressed about shit nobody's gonna remember? Mm. Steve Jobs died. It's the last time anybody spoke about him. You think you're gonna be as successful as me as him? You think we're gonna have a trillion dollar company like he did? A two trillion dollar company, the matter. Yeah. You think you're gonna invent something that changed the world? I mean, it's it's possible, but you know. You think highly of yourself. I, I'm not. I, no, I didn't say I was gonna do it. I said it's possible. Well, but let's you just know? be real. I won't probably do something like that guy did. Right. He died. When was the last time anyone's talked? I think this is the only podcast in this month in the world that's spoken about Steve Jobs. Probably. See, he's not, he wasn't that important or serious. And people are probably watching us on an iPhone right now, which is crazy. He wasn't that important or serious. You know how stressful his life was and how much bullshit he had in his head? Mm. If that guy would have been right now here, I'm like, bro, you've been gone for 20 years, bro, 10 years. It wasn't that big of a deal. Nobody gives a shit about you. What were you stressing about? That's crazy, but it's the truth. What would he say? Fuck Damn. that. I would have retired 30 years ago. I'm going to take all my money and surf the Bora Bora all my life until yep. now. And it wouldn't have made a difference. Because I've been there for 10 years and I would have had 10 years of surfing in Bora Bora. And nobody would have known that I was here or not. True. But you, you know, did something else. You, you died and it's over. Michael Jackson. Mm. Who is Michael Jackson? As great as his music is, he died. Kobe Bryant. Who is Kobe Bryant? He died. There's a new guy now, right? There's new players. There's new legends. There's always the making. someone better. Always, there's yeah. new guys who are doing highlights on ESPN. There's new people who are going to drop 81 points. Who is Kobe? How much did he dedicate to his craft to be remembered as Kobe? I don't want to be remembered as shit. I don't want to be remembered. I want to remember before I die my memories. I don't care about people remembering me after I die. Mm. I want to enjoy my shit. And I don't care who's in the ride with me. As long as my family's there with me, fuck everybody else. Mm. We're, we're not that important. We're not that serious. Like, none of this shit is that. If Kobe and Michael Jackson and Steve Jobs is replaceable, mm. fuck what we're talking about. <laughs> it's not right. that serious. Seriously. And, it's, bro, that's so universal. You know what I mean? Anybody who's done anything amazing, the richest people, the most talented people, singers, whoever, it doesn't matter. It's it's all the same. Question like, for you. Yeah. When was the last time you saw a podcast? This might be the first time in the history of podcasts in the planet that anybody spoke about Alexander the Great. It's not often, but every once in a while. You, you think there's been a podcast that people have mentioned Alexander the Great as a reference? A couple, maybe. Out of the millions of podcasts, maybe a couple. Do you think five? If that, maybe five okay, or six. Right. Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great. How many times have somebody mentioned his name three times in a row? Never. Yeah. It was fucking Alexander the Great. You know how much shit that guy had to go through? How many battles, how many wounds to conquer and take over? What did he conquer? It's not his anymore. Maybe it never was. Maybe I built a goddamn efficiency in the land that he conquered Thousands of years ago. Do you think that guy in his head, he thought he was God? Or I'm fucking Alexander the Great. Bro, you're dead. Been dead for thousands of years. Mm. I barely read your book in middle school. I saw a movie about you. People of new generations won't probably watch that movie. It wasn't that serious. Do you think these guys would have done something different if they knew how it ended up? Probably, bro. Probably. There's an interview of Kobe that is shocking to me. He says, I gave this game my everything. There's some athletes that they were out there in the summers going on vacations. I didn't do that. He was training. I yeah. trained all my life because I wanted to know when I retired and I, and I had my whole life to live. At that point, I gave it all. He retires, he dies. He died, bro. Yeah. How many summers do you want to take back? <sighs> yeah, bro. How many so, summers were you going to spend with your wife and kids and created memories? But, I'm, bro, that's life. You, you give and you take. And I'm not saying that you don't have to give full throttle what you do in life. Like, that guy yeah. gave it all. Literally. 
But out of everything he gave, what was like meaningful to him? Because for me, if I'm him, which I'm not, maybe I don't want to be the best player in the planet because that takes away from time for my kids and wife. Because I could train a little harder, but then I can't be with them. Mm. So what's more meaningful to me, scoring 50 points and not spending time with my family or dropping in a mediocre 20, still making money and spending it with my family? You got to pick. You can't be in between, though. It's a you're either though. all in yeah. in that or, side or you're, yeah. or you're not. You're either all in in family and no money mm. or you're all in in your profession and no family or you say, okay, let's find a happy medium where I'm not going to be the best when it comes to money, but I'm going to be the best in family or a happy medium where I'm not going to be the best in family, but I'm going to try my hardest in business, in right. business, still not being the best because you can't compete with a guy that has no family. Right. That's 100%. So you just got to pick your, your poison and, and just swallow it. That's why right now in my life, I'm trying to take advantage of the season, bro, because I'm not married. I don't have kids. I know once that happens, my life is going to be different, you know? It's bro, my wife and I were in the office at four in the morning and then leave. We'll sleep in the office. We're like hardcore. Now we have kids and she's with the kids and I'm 97% hardcore. But the extra 3% when I need it, I'm like, I can't leave the house. I'm sorry. I, I have to be here. Because if it was up to me, I'll, leave, I'll go to work at 2 in the morning. Yeah. But it's like, all right, look, let's settle at 4 or 5. You can't leave at 2. You have a wife and kids there. You can't just be in the office at 2 in the morning. There's somebody out there who's in the office at 2 in the morning. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> There's some psycho out there doing it. Yep. I, that was me. But then you, you, you invest right. You perfect your system right. So that you don't have to be there at 2 in the two morning. in the morning. You could be there at 4. Because the guy who's there at 2, he's building it to a point that even if he's there at 2, you ca you won't catch up to me. And there's a guy who doesn't show up to his office. And he's beating everybody. And he's, <laughs> he's destroying everyone. He's destroying everybody. And I'm there at 4, and he's like, you damn punk. Then you have another guy who shows up at 10, and he's like, yeah, I'm cool. I only show up at 10, and I'm still beating everybody. Mm. But it, it's levels. So you can't look at competition. You can't look at, it's just you have to better yourself. But competition, what is that? Like, who's your competition? Who are you comparing yourself to? Myself. Mm. That's the only person I can compare myself to. Like, if, if you're trying to, let's say, be in shape, right? You take a before and after picture. Who are you comparing yourself to? To you. To you. I can't take a picture of freaking Fat Joe and a picture of Arnold and be like, all right, I'm going to comp That wasn't me and that wasn't me. Right. So you're only comparing. That's not, Arnold's not my competition. I'm like, oh, you know, I need to be like this guy. And Fat Joe's not my competition because I've never been as fat as Fat Joe. Exactly. Right? But Fat Joe's seven feet tall and I'm four feet tall. So I'm not Fat Joe either. Right? Like, so who's your competition? Yourself. So you take a before and after picture of your life of your success, of whatever you want, and just compare yourself to yourself in two days, three days, a month, a year, six years, and that's when you know if you were better. If you're mm -hmm. skinny and you gain weight and that's what you wanted to do, good. If you're fat and you lost weight and that's what you wanted to do, good. If whatever you're comparing yourself, if you accomplished it, you did it. And if you didn't, you didn't. But it's simple. It's just you, yourself, and you. Mm -hmm. You don't care what nobody else is doing. Super important. If I'm 200 pounds and my friend gains an extra 100 pounds, goes to 300, I didn't get skinnier. He just got fatter. 100%. So I'm like, hey, look, I'm better than you. Okay? We're both in real bad shape. What does that have to do? Just because I gained more weight or just because it's the opposite. Your, your friend didn't get the six-pack that you got. Who cares? He, he doesn't need it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like You can't compare yourself to anybody because... Everybody is different and everything is different. And maybe you, what you think it's an accomplishment to them is not. And maybe you think this guy is happy because he looks good, but mentally he's not good. And maybe you feel that you're not good because you don't look good, but spiritually you're in a different level. Right. So who's right and who's wrong? Who knows? It's fucking, it's relative. Who mm. knows? That's, again, that's just me. I'm fucking crazy. No, nah, that's the way, that's just... That comes with experience, because I'm sure you didn't think this way 12, 13, 14 years ago, right? It, it, ha it has to come to you through through living a life and realizing these things after after the fact, 
Of course. You know? Because we're, we're not born into this world with this, like, way no. of thinking, you know? No. I'm not, I've acquired, I've, I've noticed that wisdom is a unique thing, right? Where it enriches your life, but there's no way to get it for free. No, there's no shot. You have to go through the loss, the pain, the bad experience, because we don't learn anything from winning. I, I lit, I've learned nothing from winning. Nothing. Winning sometimes is bad. Yes. <laughs> it makes you lazy. It makes you complacent. W winning is bad because sometimes it's like... Makes you think you're better than you are. I think winning doesn't give you... What's the word? Because if I, if I win, I'm not thinking nothing. I'm just like taking the win. I'm like, fuck, I won. Like, right. no questions asked. But I think it doesn't get you ready for battle. No, the opposite. Right? It might make you feel like you are, but you're not. You're not. Because, like, what I still hold on to is, like, hard work. It doesn't matter what happens to me in my life. I know that I can wake up at four. I can get focused. I can get organized. And shit will get done. Mm. Through consistency and doing it. Right. But if I just won, 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 I didn't have that discipline and, like, backbone to, like, my success, I wouldn't know what to do if I wasn't successful. I mean, damn, I lost this shit. What do I do now? Damn, I just, it had just happened. I just won. Um, fuck, how did I get here again? Mm. Like, I forgot. Are right, you fucked. Mm. But, like, I know exactly what the same thing I did in high school, I did it in college, I did it in... in Law school, I did it when I opened my office, and I still do it today. It's just show up, do what you got to do. My, I have my routine, my, my little jacket, my, my glasses, lights are off, candle on, headphones, boom, beast mode. Like, on, off, on, off, on, off. Doesn't matter what it is. I can be doing construction. It's just, okay, let's get in the right mind to stay. Boom, 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 let's go. Mm. But that you gain that through having to have done it so many times. That is second nature. That it doesn't matter if I'm studying for a test or I'm studying, getting ready for a trial mm. or getting ready for a presentation or getting ready for anything. It's just always the same method. Like, boom, 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 let's go. So, it, But you gain that through endless hours of, you know, it's like shooting a free throw in practice or shooting a free throw in the NBA finals. Mm. Same shit. How many free throws have you shot in a final? Never. It's my first NBA finals free throw. Cool. How many free throws have you shot your entire life? Millions. All right, just do it again. 100%. Right? It's just the same mechanism, just in a different environment. Mm. And that goes with experiences and failures and different moments and just you perfect it and you create your system. My opinion. There's a method, though. <laughs> it's a fucking method. So it, it when does it separate... When, when does the method and the proven way of doing things separate from, oh, this is, you know what I mean? Like, once you develop something and it works, it's got to be, be like, all right, this works. You know, it's not so much like, ah, oh, that's just how I think it works. What do you mean? Like, it works, but if you want it to stay the same way, you just do the same thing. But if, you but if your method better. works and you not get better, but like in business, you try to expand, you try to like grow. So you always have to tweak it mm. because if, man, I don't even know how an example to give you that like it's like relatable. Um, but let's say in business, you have, you sell cars, right? You have a dealer that costs you five grand to operate and you sell 10 cars a month and you have the same way, same method, same everything. That same way, same method, same everything is going to get you to sell at most 10, 10 cars, cars every month. Now, you want to sell 20. You got to double up. Double up. And the same method will not allow you to Just sell 20. 20 cars. Yep. So then when you switch up your, your, your method, if you're not cautious, you might end up setting zero. Mm, super important. That's that leap you take. So it's just how do you tweak your method in a way that even if you sell 11 or 12 cars, you're just auto, you're fine tuning it to 20, whereas you just do something and it just goes to zero. Because mm. if it goes to zero, you didn't have a method. You were just winging it. Right? Right. So it's like if you're building a skyscraper and you're in floor six, doesn't matter what you do, you have the foundation to floor six already. 
Right. So even if you want to go to 20 stories, you might have to destroy floor seven, eight, and nine because it was wrong. But from one to six, it was still strong and solid. Right. So that's when you get your method and you tweak it, but you don't take the basics out. You don't take your foundation off because then you go destroy mm. yourself. So maybe you're like, all right, let me not, I want to sell 20, but I'm not going for 20. Let's go for 11. Can we do 11? Yeah, like an auction. Can we, can we do 11? Yeah, boom, 11, 12, 13, shit, cool, great. Can we do some shit next month? Can we do 12? Not 11. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, listen, 11 is better than 10. Mm. And it's not like I was setting 10 all the time. I was setting up to 10. But now I'm averaging 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12. Goes 20. Let's tweak it one more time. Let's, let's, let's see what we do. Damn, we did 13. What changed? Okay, boom, boom. But eventually, you'll get to your 20. But it wasn't from 10 to 20 because it's impossible. You can't double your shit up in, in a thought. Mm. Like, if it was that easy, everybody would just be doubling every day. Like, 30, 40, 50, 60, 300 cars. Like, it doesn't work like that. Just save and conserve your 10. It's perfect. Try to go for 11, 12, 11, 12, 10, 9, 8, 11, 12, 10, 14, 14, 14, 14, 15, 16, 14. Boom, I hit 20. But hey, when you hit your 20, you know you're going to go, you can, you can go back to 15 again. But hey, 15 is not 10. Mm. But don't really be planning to hit 30 because you might go to five, right? I hate math. It's just, <laughs> are you following me? I follow. Very you. simple, basic, Constant, right? Yeah. You just have to, I always tell my wife, every time we climb a step in life, right? It's a ladder. It's, it's a never ending ladder. So it doesn't matter what floor you're in. It's just, it doesn't matter. It's never ending. Every time I climb one step, I just reset. Like, I have to reset. I don't like to climb two steps at once. Mm. Stay here. Let me enjoy this step. Let me, let me ground myself in this one. Let me own this one. Let me think about I'm going to climb the next one. And then, boom, I'm ready. But I think when you climb too many steps at once, like, you lose track mm. of all the floors you skipped. And those are experiences you can't get back. And then you got to tear down the skyscraper. It's not that you're going to tear They're going to tear it down for you. Mm. It's going to happen on its own. It's yep. going to fucking collapse. And then you're going to be like, shit. Mm. Like, now I got to start from scratch. Like, yep. Why didn't I perfect, you know, like just make every floor so good that worse comes to worse from 100 to 90, it collapses, but I still got 70 floors, mm. which is way more than how when I started building. Right. So that, that's how I see it. Just very calculated, like, okay. Boom, let's do it. You always have to move. You can never stay in the same floor because it's still going to collapse. Oh, that's part of the rule. If you don't keep building and it you stay in the same floor, it'll collapse own. automatically if you're being lazy. <laughs> you're right. You're 100% right, bro. <laughs> so it's just w when are you about to build without not building, without collapsing? That's boom. I have to do it. I live, by, I live by a quote. I heard it years ago and I was like, wow, if you're not growing, you're dying. I agree. Bro. You're resting on your laurels. If you're not building... You're falling apart. Yeah. I. It doesn't mean you're going to fall apart automatically, but Over eventually. Time. Just see like a bank account. If you're not adding money to your bank account, you're, you're subtracting. you don't have to really subtract, but eventually it will subtract. You got to spend. So it doesn't matter how much you have in the bank account. If you're not adding to it, mm. you're subtracting. And that's life. Right? There's, there's people that give and then there's people that take. There's not such a thing as people who are just neutral. There's no neutral, right? Um, there's some people that help and give and like they, they, they give. And there's some people that don't do bad. They don't affect people, but they don't do anything. They don't, yeah, right. You're right. as good as the ones that don't do anything. Like, you, like you're taking away. Like there's not such a thing as like a, look, I, what do you think about, about, you know, helping out kids? Oh, no, no. I think people should. What do you do about it? I don't, no, I don't no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't hurt kids, but I don't help them either. You, you're as good as the ones that hurt you. Like you're, you're zero. You're, you're nothing. Mm. So you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Does that make any sense? Yes, yes. Like there's people that talk about things, but they don't do shit. They never do anything. You're as good as the ones that like don't do shit. Like you, mm. you're relevant. Again, I don't know where I'm going with this, but no, I do, and I'll and I'll argue that at least the people who decide to do bad. They're the reason there's good people. Correct. They're doing something. The people who do nothing, it's like, you're the reason the bad people exist. There you go. 
what was it they said about World War II? It was like, oh, oh man, I'm going to butcher this quote. It's fine, though. It was, all it takes for bad men to succeed is for good men to do nothing. Correct. Man, I can't believe I nailed it. That was smooth. <laughs> he, he was messing around. He knew it all along. No, no, no. I almost forgot it. And that's that's how that's how they say World War II happened. It was just a bunch of good people that, that did nothing. Anything. And look what happened. No, no, I'm not like them. I just, I can't get involved. Correct. So, so you are. You are them. In fact, they're doing something bad, but they're doing it. Mm. They're actively doing something bad. They're like, they're all in. And they're bad. Whatever reason they have for doing bad, they're all in. Mm. And you have these guys going all in to do good. And you're just doing nothing. nothing. Who are you? You're, you're as bad as the worst. You're, you're not doing offensive. shit. Yeah, bro. You're just wasting air, air and oxygen. You're waiting to see who wins. And Correct. Then join the winning side. Yeah. That's, you're just nobody. At least these people have an identity. Yep. Good or bad, they're, they're going all in. And you know who they are. And you know who they are. They're not hiding it. You're like. Wishy-washy. Nobody. Nobody. Bro. And that's a lot of those in the world nowadays. There's a lot of uh, because those. It, because it's so easy to survive in today's society. You, you just, all you got to do is just agree with the majority. That's it. Whatever the majority says, I agree. It's hard to take a stance. Super hard, bro. And then, but then it goes back to our successful people giving other people their opinion. It's hard to take a sense. Why? There's going to be repercussions to it. Mm. Why would I take a stance in something? That I know there's going to be consequences. when There's going to be consequences that I, I don't I'm just trying that. to help you out. So for being nice and trying to help you out, now I got to deal with this bullshit. Mm. Ah, fuck off. Do whatever you want with your life. Mm. Because anytime you take a stance, there was going to be consequences. Right. I'll take a consequence if it benefits my family. But just taking a consequence just for, again, in the majority of life, right? Right. Why, why would I take a consequence just because I was trying to help you out? Mm. Shit. And then you're going to hate me after that. Right? It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of like when you have like friends who are dysfunctional, they have dysfunctional relationships. Bro, and then everybody they, has uh, those friends. And then they have like a relationship and you're like, yo, I don't think she loves you. I think, you know, she's using you. Bro, they, what are you talking about? And then it turns out they flip it on you. Mm. Ah, it's because you can't see me. You can't, you, you hate to see me happy. And you're like, whoa, no, 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 bro. no, no, bro. I, I want I, to see you happy. I want to see you happy. No, you're just hating. So then what do you say? I have friends that have disastrous relationships. They ask me, what do you think? I'm like, great, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're living the dream. Bro, but that's so hard, man, because I, I, I... You see, you're falling for the trap, though. You're trying to be a good person and try to help out. I know, If man. that makes... Look, if that's who you're with and that makes you happy, who am I to tell you the obvious? Mm. You know, maybe I saw her with another husband. <laughs> Listen, hey. maybe it wasn't her. I Maybe I saw things. Look, if, if I saw it, I'm sure you've seen it. I'm not going to tell you what I saw that you know that you saw. So we'll keep it like this. What makes you happy? Do what makes you happy. But that's a perfect example. Mm. When you try to tell someone something, right? It's like when there's like a relationship, like a, a problem with, uh, with family members. Let's say you have a, a friend and your friend has a brother, right? And then the brother did something wrong mm. to the other brother. And then you take sides. At the end of the day, they're going to come back and their family, and you're the outsider, you're going to be a scapegoat. Mm. So it's like, why would you get involved in, in that type? Oh, look, you, my brother said this and this and this. I agree, he's a piece of shit. Hey, you know what Rob said about you? He said you're a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mm. say that. I just agree with your brother because you are a piece of shit. Ah, oh, really? Oh, I am, huh? <laughs> and then the brothers love each other, and you're the piece of shit for both of them. Yeah, bro. And that's how most people in life, you know, you, mm. you get stuck. By, by giving an opinion and making a decision. I decided to opine on something that had nothing to do with my life. What do you think about my brother? He's your brother, not mine. Hey, you got some water? <laughs> uh, there goes the question about the brother. You guys get back, you become yeah. friends again. Yeah. I got what do you think about this? Oh. You, you got some ice cream? Boom, move on. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I, I got certain tricks. That makes sense. They make a lot of sense. Life, huh? It's uh, beautiful. 
Life is beautiful if you don't take it too serious. Yeah, very important. That's it. Very important. And the things that you can learn if you just choose to stay in that space of, I'm not going to take this too serious. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to go for what I want in life, right? Yeah, you always, listen, you always have, need to have goals if you're into that. Right. You're not into goals, by all means, don't. It's, it's cool not to have goals. I wish in one lifetime I didn't have dreams and aspirations and I didn't have to have goals so I can just be. Mm. But in this one, I'm kind of stuck in my brain that I have goals. Right. Because I think we all have a lot of lifetimes. I've, I've lived many lifetimes. This is just one of them. I agree. So in this lifetime, my mentality is that I have certain goals and I have them, right? But I'm still enjoying smelling the flowers as I go through life. Mm. And if I reach those goals or not, I'll work on it. But I'm still, it's, it's multifaceted. Right. Goal-oriented and family-oriented, right? I'm, I'm going through both streets at the same time. And it's just, they both go hand in hand. That's me. Mm. Um, you can't fail a family if you're good, and if you mean good. And you can't fail with your goals if you work hard and you try hard. 100%. Doesn't mean you're going to be the best and accomplish them, but just keep trying and you'll be fine. There's luck to involve. It's a lot of luck. I believe in luck. I think, I think luck is very important. Luck is inevitable, though, if you keep trying. You know what I mean? L luck, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Right. Yes. Right. But some people are not lucky. True. Some people are luckier than others. Correct. Let's just put it like that. Put, Everyone's like that. lucky, but some people are lucky. So some. why aren't you 6'7 and play for the Heat? Not lucky, I guess. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Right? Um, so it's it's always... That factor. That yeah. factor of like, oh, but I, I, I wish I... I wish I... I wish I... Yeah. It didn't turn out that And way. why did that guy who sang in the street get... Seen by Peter, who happens to be a big producer, and then he makes him the biggest singer in the world. Is it luck? Preparation, opportunity, and luck. Because a lot of people are prepared. They just don't get the opportunities. Mm. Um, now, the question is, why don't they get the opportunities? Maybe because they're not looking for them. So luck is when preparation meets opportunities. You can prepare all you want, but the opportunity is not going to just be like, hi, hello, I'm an opportunity. Don't miss out. Opportunities come in. This is an opportunity. Come. Yes. Right? This moment is an opportunity. It's just what do I have in my head that can make this an opportunity? 100%. Let's say right now I happen to be a Hollywood producer and I like you and I'm here. I'm like, man, it's a great time for me and you to do a movie. Mm. Right? Preparation because you have a podcast and you're grinding and you're doing this shit. Opportunity. I'm here. I happen to be in the industry. I like this. And look, that I'm in the good mood to be like, let's do a movie. Mm. And that you're like, hey, you want to do a movie? So it's, 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 it's a lot of... Uh, it's a formula, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of factors. Everything just has to be perfect. But as we speak, I'm here thinking, what can we do together? How, how can we do something together, right? It's preparation, because mm. this didn't just happen. And it's opportunity, because I'm always looking for opportunities. Of course. So... You understand? Like, mm. you can prepare all you want, but if you don't try out for for Americans Got Talent, you're not gonna get picked. Hundred percent. You know, you can you can be the best basketball player, but if you don't try out for the basketball team, you're never gonna be seen. Mm. Right? And there's other people who are not as good as you, but they try out, they get seen, they get drafted, they go to the NBA. Mm. You're like, man, I was better than that guy. Yeah, but you maybe didn't prepare like he did. 100%. Or, may, or maybe you made the wrong choices. Or maybe you weren't looking for the opportunities. You weren't asking everybody, hey, you got a basketball team I don't play for? Because you're too good. Mm. So you're like, oh, someone's going to ask me if I want to play for their team. No, buddy. Yeah. Shit's not going to happen. You got to go out there and look There's for a lot of people out there. Yeah. You know, a lot of good people at many things. 100%. There's good people at everything. You know how many fucking lawyers there are? A lot. There's more lawyers than I can count. Mm. And most of them are really good. What sets you aside? yourself i guess it's, but there's nothing that sets you aside everybody's good and mm. when you make it to a high level everybody's good yeah you go to the nba you're like oh i play e good basketball no, Dude, we good. all do what do you don't show off that you're a basketball player because you're gonna get show embarrassed it. probably show it yes right don't, don't tell me you're a lawyer don't tell me everybody here is 
Do so, something different. Yep. Like stand out amongst us. Now that's when preparation, you know, hard work, discipline, method, it makes it happen. Because mm -hmm. I, I know what, I watch it on YouTube. It was like, look, at a certain level, everybody's in the same. Like, you're all good. It's just who's got more endurance. Mm. That's what happens to athletes. Who's better? Endurance. Who runs faster? Who can get punched more and take the hits and punch back in the 10th round when you're dying? Mm. You both are good. You both can knock each other out, right? If, in UFC, we can both we can kill each other. Now, who's got more endurance? Mm. Who's got more heart? Who's going to last longer? In basketball, we cannot make a basketball. In baseball, we can all catch and throw. It's just who is going to be throwing and hitting in the ninth inning and the freaking craziest game of the finals, the World Series, and the bottom of the ninth? Mm. Does your heart let you do it? Do you have, the, do you have it in your blood to, to make it happen? Because mm. we can all hit a dying ball. If you're a lawyer, everybody can read a book. You can write it. Now, who's going to write the best and make it happen in a trial when your client's life depends on it? Mm. Oh, wait, wait, hold up. Like You should do it. Ah, you, ah, you don't got it. Mm. Ah, we can, all, we can all shoot a free throw in practice, but shoot it now in, in, game, seven in game seven with yeah. one second left in the NBA Finals. Coach, who's going to take the shot? Nah, I think he should take it. <laughs> yeah. why, why don't you take it? Nah, nah. Mm. Ah, then you're not the GOAT. <laughs> right? You're not messy. Like, why is it that there's always that one person? It's like, let's go. Because they're in a different mental level. Like, That's why Michael Jordan is better than LeBron. Whoever whoever hates, I don't care. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not going to agree or disagree. Because <laughs> you haven't asked me to give you my opinion. Listen. And if you ask me, I'll tell you in the next podcast. <laughs> so yeah, I, st I stand by what I say. I'm not giving you a decision. All right, but let's, let's, let's bring it into the point. Let's tie it in. Michael Jordan was that guy. He was that guy to take the shot and make it in game six, game seven. He took the shot and he made it. That, he made it. What's the question? No, just an observation. <laughs> no question. I agree with your observation. <laughs> Move on. You see? It, it's, 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 it's hard to, to, uh, to actually apply it to real life. You're right. 110%. Because I could have just said, no, nah, no, nah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. <laughs> Especially in a topic that I enjoy. I enjoy basketball. So I can talk shit about basketball all day. Right. But I was like, you're right. Jordan was a great player. It's people, so people who can perform under those circumstances and people who can't, there's very few of us who can do that, man. It's. I'm just using him as an example because he was proof that this is a different type of human being. Who, when the ball, when the game is on the line, when everything is riding on this one play, he was the guy. You know and I mean? think the reason why people like him are able to accomplish that is because they don't take it too serious. Mm. Because when you're in the game, I'm in the NBA Finals, Game Seven. I might not ever make it here again. This is once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm. I'm one shot away from winning. You're putting so much pressure on yourself that you will miss. You will mm. miss. If you're just like, all right, just, just the hoop and the ball and whoosh, I made it. Oh, shit. This was the final, man. I, we won. Mm. It's different. Totally. Same thing with life. If your whole mentality is, I got one shot, an opportunity. If I fuck it up, I die tomorrow. Dude, you're, you're playing the game with too much pressure. Way too much. Let's step back. You're getting paid millions of dollars. Your family is good. You have a ball. You put it inside a hole. And you are good at that because you shoot the ball at that hole all day, every day of your whole life. You've been doing this your entire life. Let's do this one more time. Mm. Can we do it? Of course. I don't miss. Boom. And then you go back. You step back and you're like, oh, shit. I did that in the NBA Finals. That's pretty cool. We won. Mm. But you don't say, damn, I have to make this shot because it's the NBA Finals. And if I don't, my dude, same thing with life. You do what you got to do. You've been doing it all along. No stress, no pressure. Nothing's going to happen. If you miss the shot, they're going to talk shit about you. If you make the shot, they're going to talk shit about you. Um, if you make the hero shot, 
you know, you, you, you freaking hit it with a buster beater one second. That either makes you the hero or the villain. Because with every buster beater, it comes the holy shit, we won the game with one second left. Or, it takes balls to hit that shot. Right. Now, the same way you can become the hero. You can become the villain. You're like, that guy sucks. He took the shot and we lost because of you. Listen, if you can't take the, the I'm the man, right? You can't take the other one either. Mm. Because, yeah, it's easy to take the shot and everyone's damn, he's a god. You're like, hell yeah. But when that comes, damn, he's a scrub. Mm. And it's like this. It doesn't matter if you're Messi, Ronaldo, doing It doesn't matter who you are. Who you are. If you miss the game-winning shot, you suck. They should restructure your contract. You're not worthy of basketball. You should never do it again. Mm. Now, you make that shot. <sighs> but you know who got all the accolades? You did, not your team. Because you were the one that said, I'm doing it. And if you, you can take the heat, you can take the victory. And if you can't take the heat, don't take the victory. Mm. It's same thing with life. If you don't risk the biscuit, you ain't getting shit. Mm. If you play it safe, you're going to stay where you have. That's, I think that's just like a, a rule. It's just it's hardcore always, facts. You take all the credit in, when you win and you take all the blame when you lose. Man, you seen the quarterback when the team loses because he just. Everybody hates that guy. It was a fu he fumbled yeah. the ball and like, oh my God, this guy sucks. You're like, bro, if that guy would have, if that ball would have landed in this guy's hands, like it tipped off. If he would have gotten it, you would have been like, wow, this guy is a genius. Yeah. And it was just one inch. It was one inch. One way or the other. So just know that throw the best shot you got, and either tomorrow you're going to be a hero or a villain. But if you know that was the best shot you did, and you ran the route you have to route, you did what you had to do. Mm. You can't you can't go home and be like, damn. Because you wouldn't have made a difference. If, if it was a fumble or not, if it was a pick or a touchdown... You would have done identical, the same thing. I didn't do anything wrong. It's just the other player did something better. Mm. But that, but that's what comes to your your mentality. Because some of these guys, when they when they hit that hail mary, and it's a touchdown, they're like whatever. Because in their head, they're like, could have been a pick. So why am I celebrating? Could have been a pick. Exactly. And when they throw and it's a pick, they're like whatever. Could have been a touchdown. touchdown. So it doesn't matter what you say about them. They don't care about the news. But that's what those guys that take the shot with four seconds left, and they're like, it's a 50-50. Either I make it or not. Mm. And if I'm thinking about it, I probably won't make it. So just boom. Shoot it. Look, it's there. Did it. Cool. Or, all right, I didn't make it, but it doesn't make a fucking difference. Mm. But th that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, 100%. It, if, if that touchdown makes you like, oh, God damn, I did it. Then maybe you, in your head, you're like, I couldn't have done it. Because that, all that like crazy like cheering is probably that like, you didn't think you could do it. That's mm. why you celebrated because you're like, damn, shit, I actually did it. You're right. Yeah. Why, why are you celebrating, bro? You know it could have been a pick too. It was a 50-50. Mm. But then when you do the pick and they're like depressed, they're like, well, you thought it was a touchdown? You think you're a god or something? You think automatically everybody you're playing against sucks and you're just going to throw a freaking dime and they're going to... You're playing against professionals too. Mm. So... Think about when you touched when you hit that touchdown, the guy on the other side missed a pick. Right? So they allowed a touchdown. How do they feel? The camera's not pointing at those guys. But those guys are like, damn, we lost the game because of me, because I could have just taken it. Yep. Right? But when you hit the pick, the camera don't show them either. When they're like, you see, I did it. It's always the main guy. Always. So you gotta bite the bullet. If you want the spotlight, bite the bullet. And if not, don't do it. Yeah. Play defense. <laughs> Nobody talking shit about no defense player. Bro, that's... that's <laughs> Either you play offense or you play defense. Yeah, offense yeah. is yeah. fancy. The quarterback, get all the spotlight. Play defense, no matter what you do, only the coach knows that you fucked up. Pretty much. Yep. So what are you going to do in life? Play offense or defense? And it's okay. There's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. It's just what you want to do. You can't play defense that won the spotlight. Because ain't nobody going to put your highlight of you. Mm. Nobody gives a shit about you. But you can't play offense and not want to take the blame when you But lose. you cannot play yeah. offense and not want to take the last shot and take the blame when the whole team loses because of defense. And you're like... But yeah. it was the defense. It wasn't no, me. No. It was them. No, no. Brody, you're the quarterback. Mm. You're, the, you're the point scoring machine. Super, it's because of you. Super important. So the same way when you didn't score no points and defense won the game, you're like, oh, we won. It wasn't you. It was them. Mm -hmm. 
when you don't score, you you didn't score. You didn't score. Mm. You lost. But the game was 40 to 55. Mm-mm-mm. You could have hit another touchdown. Exactly. But you didn't. Lost because of you. And that's why the pitchers, catchers, um, the goalkeepers, you know, the quarterbacks, it's always the, the highest paid position. Right. But they take all the heat. Because yeah. it's, it's if you win game. by you, you lose by you. 110%. That's in life. Who are you? You're the main actor or you're a uh, cast? Like, an extra. An ex- <laughs> it's not bad to be an extra. Bro. But don't want to get paid like the main actor. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, my God. It's not bad to be an extra. But right. don't say, damn, DiCaprio's right. making 20 million. I only made 50 I mean, bucks for this. You're not DiCaprio. <laughs> you're not that guy. And you probably don't, can't do what he does. Exactly. Yes. Super, super important. And he probably was at your position at a certain point, and he moved on to there. Yes. He wasn't born to be the main actor. Expectations. He busts his ass. Mm. So now don't talk shit about the damn guy. He deserves it. Exactly. And he's going to wash off, and there's going to be a new guy who's going to take over his spot. And he can't talk shit about the guy either because you're Cause done, bro. It's his turn. And he went through the same thing you did. Yeah. He went through the same thing. It's not rocket science. And the guy before you and before you and before you and after you and after you, they're all going to do gonna shit. They're all going to be part of the cycle. Oh, Simple, bro. It's <laughs> not rocket <laughs> name of this podcast today is It's Not Rocket Science. <laughs> That's the title. It's not rocket title science. is Not Rocket Science. It's really not. Man. Robert, thank you for coming. This has been phenomenal. Do I have to decide and answer it? <laughs> <laughs> I usually end with three questions, even though you kind of answered them. Uh, but we'll, we'll revisit them. So cool. three questions. One, <laughs> what inspires you? My wife and my kids. I love it, bro. That's awesome. Nothing else. Everything else is bullshit. I keep... Bring it. You know, it's funny. A lot. Nah, of you give me. You, you, you owe me two questions because mentally I'm ready for two more. <laughs> I'm like, let's go. Let's I go. got you. I got you. I was like, I hit one. I got two more. I got you. I got you. Just really quick. So funny. Funny enough, something that keeps coming up, coming up when I ask that question is family, right? Uh-huh. For me, I'm not married and I don't okay. have kids, but the wife and kids I don't have yet is what motivates me to do the things. I Absolutely. Do, even when they don't exist yet, isn't that crazy? Yeah. It, my, fa- I've always done something. Everything I've done has always been with the idea and vision of having a wife and kids. Mm, that's awesome. Always. Even when I didn't have them, what would my kids be proud of? You got no kids, bro. Mm. You don't have a wife. Mm. Okay, but if I did have a wife and what I did they, have kids. What would they be proud of? What would they be proud of? Why? Because I've been practicing. When I do have a wife and kids, I keep doing the same the thing same I've thing. always been doing. And I'm not changing because of my wife and my kids. But I've always had them in my brain before they even existed. Super important. So it's not like, oh, you change because you have a no. wife. No, 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 no. I was already behaving. I got this. better. Yes. Because I have because now I actually see it. Yes. Like before I was dreaming about it, working towards it. Now I see it. I'm unstoppable. Mm. Question two and three. Come on. <laughs> Question number two. What's next for you? Um, I'm gonna play defense for a while. Okay. Yeah, I gotta play some defense. Interesting. Yeah. I, right. I gotta play some defense. Um and, and make sure that the next time I climb a step, it's the right step. So I'm on defense mode. I like that. I don't want people scoring goals on me. Oh, you could. I don't want to score the goal. I don't want the spotlight now. Knowing you, you'll probably catch a pick or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't get the highlight, but I'll be, I feel good about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing defense for a little bit. All right. Just all right, all right. Not chilling, playing defense. There's a difference. Yeah. You're still playing the game. Oh, I'm playing hard, but I'm playing hard defense. Defense. Okay. All right. Question three. Come on. <laughs> Last question. How do you want to be remembered? I don't want to be remembered. Mm. No one has ever said that in my 40 episodes of recording this podcast. <laughs> I don't want to be 40 remembered. Plus. Don't remember me. I, I, I'm not remembering you. Wow. I'm being, being honest. Hey, I, I don't even know. Bro, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> He's made history at Montana at the podcast. People are like, I want to remember you now because you don't want to be remembered. People always the opposite. My friend, thank you so much for coming. Bro, I appreciate you. you. You owe me a book. I so, do. So say it on the regular. I send do. Me a book. I'm gonna sign it. Autograph. And, and I'm signed. Gonna, I'm gonna drive it over to your mail it to whatever you want. No, drive it. Drive it. All right. So all it right. doesn't get lost. Amazon's <laughs> kicking ass nowadays. How can people connect with you? Instagram, all that stuff. Instagram at Robert Dominguez. Just Robert, how it's spelled, and Dominguez, how it's spelled. Perfect. Took that name years ago. <laughs> Perfect. I'm selling it, though, if anybody wants it. Maybe another Robert any, Dominguez. Any Robert there. Dominguez wants it, I'm playing defense. Offer have me something, I'll give it to you. A couple hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> Offer me a churro, I'll sell it to you. It doesn't there matter. You go. 
Alrighty, guys. Another episode of Montana Method Podcast with my special guest, Robert Dominguez. Always remember, guys, push it to the limit. The world is yours. And if you are not chasing a dream, life is meaningless. To the next one. That was deep. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. I never asked for nothing, no. But now I want it all. Promise I'ma do it. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags.